Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm going to begin a brand new series, and I'm really excited about this because this is a teaching that has um, been used of the Lord to touch a lot of people's lives. If you've watched our program recently, we just got through teaching on spirit, soul, and body, which is the truth that just unlocked my heart and began to give me a revelation. And from that teaching, if you can understand what we've talked about, that it's in your spirit that you got changed. In your spirit, you're a new person. You relate to God based on the spirit man that you can't touch or feel the spirit. You have to take what the Word of God says and just believe it. If you can take all of those truths that we talked about in spirit, soul, and body, this has led me to another revelation that I consider to be one of the very top things that God has ever shown me, and that's entitled, You've Already Got It. That's the title that I've put on this teaching, and that's what I'm going to begin to start sharing today. And if you took everything that the Lord showed me, I'd have to say that this revelation of spirit, soul, and body is number one. But then from that, it has led me to understand that I already have everything in my spirit, that I've already got it. And this has totally changed the way that I approach the Lord and receive from God and relate to Him. Now, this may not have, um, you know, struck a chord with you yet just on this title. But, you know, look at the book that we've got on this. It's entitled, You've Already Got It, and it's got a picture of a dog chasing his tail. And the reason I use that is because just like a dog, you know, chases their tail, and then if they catch it, well, they find out that they already had it all along. We are asking God to do things that the truth is He's already done it for us. And in this lies one of the keys to receiving from God. If I had to list everything that God has shown me in order of importance, I think probably spirit, soul, and body would be number one, but either two or three, somewhere along there would be this teaching on you've already got it. And the subtitle of this book is you've already got it, so quit trying to get it. And I tell you, this would take away so much frustration it makes faith a simple thing when you understand what we're talking about. And it just uh, takes all of the condemnation and the guilt out of the Christian life. You get away from legalism. This is a key to receiving so much. And I tell you, it is going to make a big, big difference in your life. You know what I would like to do today to kind of introduce this subject? I'd like to go back and play this testimony that we have on our Healing Journeys, Volume 3. There's five testimonies on here, but one of them is from Mike Hesch. And this is a man who lived in Tucson at the time that he first heard me teach on You've Already Got It. And he had a cancerous tumor on his chest. And uh, he actually took pictures of this over an eight-year period of time because he believed that God was going to heal him. But he was getting worse and worse to the point that his wife even had to help hold his head up to eat and to do things like this. He was losing his strength, and it looked like cancer was about to kill him. And he heard this teaching, the exact same teaching that I'm going to be sharing with you about you've already got it. And when he understood this, his faith just kicked in. He believed God, and in just a matter of a few months, I'm not sure, I think a maximum of six months, this tumor was completely gone. Him and his wife, Caroline, now uh, have moved to Colorado Springs, and they attend our Bible college here. And I tell you, it's just powerful what God has done in their life. And I think that this testimony, they verbalize this very well, talking about what this teaching on You've Already Got It has meant to them and how it affected their life. So I encourage you uh, to watch this, and then I'll be back at the end of today's program. In the year 2000, I noticed that I had a pimple here, and I didn't think anything of it. You know, it was just, it was just constantly a little itch here. Of course, at, at night, I'd come home, take my shirt off, and I'd have to investigate because you're just constantly aware of it. I think Mike had the sore for a while before I even really noticed it. It just was a little red bump, and it's just kind of like a skin blemish. 
Through that year, it started getting red, and then it got larger and larger, uh, like a small area about the size of my finger, and I noticed that it wouldn't heal over. I began to photograph it because I believed that God was going to heal me, and I wanted to document the dates. I prayed for it. I believed in healing, and it still didn't go away. The desert oasis of Tucson, Arizona, sits in a sheltered valley. Here, Mike and Caroline Hesch joined a non-denominational church, submitting themselves to a strong-willed pastor. In time, they became victims of religious ideas as malignant as the tumor that threatened to consume both of their lives. I was part of this ministry for like 20 years. They had taught healing, but it was all uh, performance-based doctrine. We were taught, like in John 9, that uh, God does not hear sinners. So if we were asking for prayer or asking the Lord to heal or do something in our life, if we were in sin of any kind, uh, He wouldn't be able to answer our prayer. Oh, you must be sinning. Um, oh, you're not doing God's will. Oh, you're in rebellion to the pastor. Oh, this, oh, that. Everything was a reason why I wasn't getting better. And he had talked to our pastor about it. And the pastor said, well, that's nothing that herbs can't heal. It's a nutritional problem. I seem to just be getting worse and worse and worse. When it wouldn't go away, my pastor said, why don't you go to the doctor? Then we can uh, pray specifically for God to show us exactly what it is. So that's when Mike made an appointment with the dermatologist to have it checked out. And he comes in and he looks at it. And he didn't look at it for maybe five or ten seconds. He said, excuse me, I'd like to go get my colleague. Um, and then they did the doctor thing, you know, where they, mm-hmm, uh-huh, and they're, you know, with their little uh, thing probing around the edge. And they didn't say anything in front of me, but I could tell that it was kind of serious. He left the room and he said, the nurse will uh, direct you, you know, what to do. When I got to the counter, she handed me a piece of paper and she told me, you have an appointment, and it was like two weeks out. And I can't remember if he was behind me, the doctor that saw me, or in the hallway passing through. He just stopped. And he said, no, that's not soon enough. You know, and I could sense the fear. So he said, I'll take care of this. And well, the appointment was two days out from the day I was there. And I thought, whoa, uh, to get a doctor, to a surgeon to see you in two days, I mean, you know, something's happening here. I looked at the sheet that the doctor fills out and he checked the diagnosis. He called me on the phone and after the appointment and he said that the doctor uh, said you need to have surgery right away to have that removed and wrote up a little note and this is what it was, a malignant neoplasm. And she said, well, I'll look it up and I'll call you back. So here I'm driving to work and she calls me back very seriously, she says, Mike, it means that you have um, malignant neoplasm cancer. She said, well, it's not benign. In other words, okay. it's something that's actively growing. Now I'm thinking, wow, I've got something pretty serious here. Once I talked to her, I told the pastor. I said, what do you think I should do? He said, you know, Mike, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but he said, I said, well, they want me to cut it off. He said, well, and he didn't tell me, you know, he didn't say you can't do it. He said, well, that's not God's way. Uh, we believed that um, if you went to the doctors for anything like that, to have it removed, you're sinning. And if you're sinning, then you can't trust the Lord for healing it. And he said, but the choice is yours, whatever you want to do. But he said, you know, he said, I would just counsel you not to do anything while you have that fear. Yeah. I called the, the doctor that they had made the appointment with, and I canceled it that day. And so it's just like, okay, you know, I was still believing, but still a little bit hesitant. Like, it's not that big. It wouldn't be any big deal to get it, you know, burned off or however they were going to chop it out and be done with it. The next day, I'm coming to work. It's like 8.30 in the morning, and my cell phone rings. I answer the phone. This, I'm Dr. So-and-so. I diagnosed you with this yesterday. They just told me you canceled your appointment. I said, that's correct. I did. And he said, 
you can't do that. That I said, well, I can do that. And he said, I want you to know, I'm writing here down in my records that you're warned of, this is a very deadly thing that you're dealing with and that you've been warned by me. And then I was like really scared. Well, that following February, I guess it would be 2002, got very sick with the flu. And when that happened, it was just like the tumor, it just started growing out as a tumor. I remembered what the guy said, that if you let it go, it could metastasize, which I, I think in layman's terms means it can just turn into something else or like mutate into some other form or go throughout the rest of my body or something. I'm watching and bandaging and as he's starting to get weaker and weaker and this tumor is getting bigger I'm thinking why doesn't he just get this thing cut off but at the same time as I'm thinking that and I would vocalize that to him at times just like oh, you know this is it you know this is just getting worse you're getting you know sicker just let's get this cut off and I would always go back to you know I I have to do what I feel is right in my heart and I just don't have a peace from God about getting that cut off, you know, because the Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I know that's not the solution. I don't have that peace in my heart. But as he would refuse, stubbornly refuse, and continue to stand on the word and God's promise of healing, um, I would try and agree with him and stand with him. And so for the next, like, five years, um, I went through this roller coaster at the church I would get over one hurdle and then the bar would go up a little higher and then here would be another thing that was uncovered that I wasn't doing right and that how could God hear me being a sinner. The whole time as it starts getting worse and worse, the tumor just, it would stink. You would, we'd wrap it with uh, paper towels and we'd have them soaked, spray some herb tinctures to try and help cut down on the smell of it and it would ooze and it would bleed and we're wrapping it in saran wrap and then that would fill up with the ooze and then we'd have to drain that off and change it out and the tumor was just feeding off the blood in his body. His whole complexion was like gray. His heart rate for like months was in the 90s. Oh, it was just, it was horrendous. I just noticed I just start, started slowly losing energy, like somebody just letting the air out of me. So this tumor started getting so big and very heavy, we've got to find some kind of sling or whatever. So I end up going to the store and buying a couple bras. Cut out one side, and I would just wear that as like a harness to support, to support it over here. It just, it just wasn't a good thing, you know. This was something that we just had to live with, and eventually God would heal. But I'm watching Mike's life being sucked out of him. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that things in my body weren't working right on the inside. And, and then this thing I had that it was growing, it grew off what I, I call it a tentacle or like this arm I could see like growing out underneath my skin in there and spreading out and it was nasty. It was just a, like a manifestation of, of the devil, which it really was. You know, the Bible says that the devil comes to kill, steal and destroy. And that's what he was doing. He was just sucking my life out. He's d destroying, uh, you know, any productivity in my life. He was stealing away my happiness and my joy. I do have to say, though, that it was all by my consent because I didn't take a stand against him, you know. And at that point, Mike was so sick. It was just, it was very hard for me to leave him all day when I would be working and I would call Mike and I could just tell when he'd answer the phone like he was just like, I don't know if I'm gonna come home and find him alive. One scripture that really encouraged me was Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 where it says, my son, attend unto my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, but keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. I just decided, 
since I didn't have anything else to do during the day, that I was just going to, every moment that I had, I was going to get into God's Word. And I knew that I was, I was short on the life and I needed help to all my flesh. flipping through the channels, trying to find someone to listen to while I was getting ready for work. And I came, went through the channels and there was the guy yelling and the guy doing this and I didn't want to listen to that. And then I landed on this channel where this guy was sitting in a chair talking calmly. And he said, Today I'm beginning a brand new series and I'm going to start talking about a teaching that I've entitled You've Already Got It. By that time, I'd walked back into the bathroom and I was getting ready, and I said, man, that's a stupid name for a study. And, but I didn't turn the channel, and I, I just kept listening to it. That God has already done for you everything that you need done. And by the end of that half hour, I was hooked. And so here she offered us some CDs. And it was like, okay, yeah. And my wife listened to them first. A whole new... Bible was opened up to me for seeing what uh, the Bible really was teaching and what I had believed and the things I was believing were not according to scripture. And begin to start looking at everything from a standpoint where it's already accomplished and you aren't trying to get God to do something but rather you're just appropriating what he has already provided. That mindset will totally revolutionize the way you receive from God. And then, uh, you know, passing it on to Mike saying, you got to listen to this. And this is kind of a miracle for me as well. It shows you how far, the, how quickly the Lord can deliver you when you're willing just to follow what His Word says and what He says and His Spirit over some legalistic thinking. The average prophecy that you're going to get in most churches is all about God is going to do something great. There is coming a great move of God. We are going to see something happen but you never hear people very much talk about what has already happened. And I believe that instead of getting this mindset of trying to obtain victory, it really makes a difference if you understand that through Jesus, we've already obtained victory. It's a done deal. Yeah, I do. I've already got it. I was blessed in two ways. One, I was, all these things I've been studying in the last, you know, especially in the last few weeks, but six months prior, I was getting, you know, I believe it was God who had her bring that to me because it was just like he was saying all these things in a little different way than the Word says them, but he was saying the same thing that the Word says. I remember getting this revelation about uh, James chapter 1 uh, where it says about being tossed to and fro uh, like the waves of the sea, and, and I thought, you know, that is so much me. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. It says, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And so I just said, you know what? I don't have to focus on two things. I can just focus on that. And when I did that, that's when I learned that I was able to receive from the Lord. That it wasn't him withholding. I already had it. He wasn't withholding. In other words, God through Jesus Christ was not the variable in the situation. It was me, it was my unstable thinking. The Bible says that by Jesus stripes, I was healed. I am not gonna receive another thing that the devil's gonna throw at me to keep me in bondage to not receive my healing. Just drawing this line in the sand saying, nope, it's going no further than this. That night was a turning point of his healing because even though we still had to mess with the tumor, it was still just as bad as before. It was just kind of like he didn't, he didn't look at it anymore as that. He, he was seeing himself as healed. It was about two weeks later and suddenly we're changing and I have cut out the same length of the paper towels that we've needed to before to wrap this. And suddenly it's just like, we're folding it up and the, it's just like, we can cut this much off of the paper towel. We don't need as much to, to wrap it. And I said, Mike, this is getting smaller. And I said, well, of course. I said, God's healed me. It's gotta get smaller. It can't, nothing else can happen. This might be hard to get a hold of, but I just forgot about it. 
You know, even though I would deal with it twice a day or more dealing with it, you know, having that uncomfortable bra you got to adjust and move around just didn't fit right. And uh, it's like, it was like, it was gone. You know, I'm, I'm healed. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. By Jesus stripes, I was healed. That's it. All of Andrew's teachings were already confirming the things that Mike had seen in the Word, but it was like a second witness for him that, yes, this is the way it's, it is. This is what God said, and he, it helped him to stand even more on the healing. I actually, I don't know, somewhere around May, I didn't have to wear the bra anymore. Each time as we're changing it, it's like, Mike, this thing is getting smaller and smaller. It was just like it was shrinking. So it was less and less that we had to deal with until it's a little thing like this and then he can change it himself, of course, and no longer was wearing the support. And it's just like, this thing is gone. By August, it was nothing. It was just this little bump, a, a scar on my chest here. I was made whole by Jesus Christ and this is the only direction my body can go. Devil, you can't have me. I've already been bought. For eight years, Mike Hesch believed and prayed for his healing with no results. In desperation, he finally drew a line in the sand between the Word of God and his own unstable thinking. He chose to believe the Word, that healing had already been provided by God's grace. Andrew's teaching confirmed and encouraged him, and the malignant tumor disappeared in seven months. After his healing, Mike felt strongly that there was more he needed to learn about standing firm on the Word of God. He and Caroline sold their home in Tucson and moved to Colorado Springs to attend Karis Bible College. Their journey of grace and freedom has just begun. Isn't that a powerful testimony? I tell you, Jesus is alive and well, and His power is available to us. But you've got to understand that you aren't waiting on God to heal you. God has already done it. He has already placed on the inside of you. If you were born again, He has given you the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And the key to walking in that is that you've got to understand that you've already got it. So quit asking God, quit waiting on God, take your authority and just rest in what he's already done. And just like Mike saw this growth on his chest leave, there are some of you that may not have a physical thing like this, but you've got a cancer eating at your emotions and eating at your heart, your relationships, all kinds of different ways that people suffer. And I tell you, whatever your need is, God has already supplied it. God has already done it. Everything that you need is already there. And I know some of you are saying, well, I can kind of see this. I can see the results it had in Mike's life, but what good does it do me just to think I've already got it? I need to get my body healed. I need to get my finances healed or whatever. Just this first step of believing that God has already done it is vitally important. And I'm going to be sharing some things with you. I think it's going to make a big difference. So I encourage you to continue to watch our program over the next few weeks, I'm going to be sharing on you've already got it, so quit trying to get it. If you'll listen, our announcer is going to give you some information about how you can get this teaching and also this uh, video that you saw today about Mike Hesh. Andrew's complete teaching series titled You've Already Got It is available on either CD or on DVD as seen on our daily TV program. Each is offered for 19 pounds. Remember to specify the CD or DVD when you order. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awme.net. After choosing English, click on Resources at the top of the page and then MP3 Downloads. Or, if you prefer, You've Already Got It is available in book form when you send £9.99. You can also get this teaching in a companion study guide for £17.50 when you contact the ministry. The first audio teaching in today's series is available for £3 when you write or call. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this first CD titled, We're Already Blessed, Free of Charge. 
On today's program, Andrew mentioned the healing journey of Mike Hesch. You can watch Mike's story along with four other healing testimonies on Healing Journeys Volume 3. It's available on DVD for 13 pounds when you contact us. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922-473-300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44-1922-473-300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Or you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in Colorado Springs for the annual Andrew Womack Ministers Conference, October 3rd through the 7th, and in Karlsruhe, Germany, October 21st through the 23rd. He'll also be in Warwick, England for the Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe Ministers Conference, October 24th through the 26th, and in Kampala, Uganda for a Gospel Truth Seminar, October 28th and 29th. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. Are you a world changer? Karis Bible College has extension schools around the world. The same truth that sets you free at our school in England will also set you free in Belfast, St. Petersburg, Amsterdam, Kampala, Chennai, and South Africa. Go to awme.net or call our phone center and ask for a complete list of Karis Bible College locations near you. Change your life. Change the world. While flipping TV channels in their home in Kathmandu, Nepal, Bob and Dawa Wesley stumbled across the Gospel Truth broadcast with Andrew Womack, and their lives were changed forever. When I found out that how much God loved me in what he did for me. I started understanding the gospel, actually. Desiring to fulfill God's call on their lives, Bob and Dawa moved to Colorado Springs and attended Karis Bible College. Then it was back to Nepal and back to work. I started walking towards my office and I started seeing these two little boys and their feet was cracked and you know their clothes were really, really dirty. I asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? and the Lord said, feed them. With that direction from God, their ministry was born, feeding the destitute boys of Kathmandu, both physically and spiritually. I've always focused on sharing the gospel with these kids, and it is only the Word of God that changes the lives of the people. It is only the gospel. Another changed life, changing the world. Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College.